Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here tonight. Thank you because we know you are going to do great things in our lives. Lord, as we come with all our empty vessels, we pray, O God, that you will feed them to overflowing, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you will touch every life here today. And Lord, we will receive the divine touch from you in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that all we need to do to get ourselves ready for this great gathering that is ahead of us, the Easter retreat, Lord, I pray that you will prepare us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you have had an answer. Worship and we exalt your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Shall we be seated, please? As you all know, we just have about um, just, um, six, seven days more to the commencement of our Easter retreat. And uh, like we've prayed and we are believing God, great things the Lord is going to do for us. Even at this year, Easter retreat in Jesus' name. Those couple of things to just let us know that we'll start the retreat here in our local church on Friday. On Friday night, God helping us, then we will uh, have the privilege to listen to the messages of our Father and the Lord, and then we do the Bible studies at the retreat. Then on Saturday morning, we all travel down to our regional headquarters where we go and continue the retreat period. We want to encourage every one of us, you know, the retreat starts on Friday. Let's all be here and our invitees as well so that we can prepare ourselves for the retreat. And great things the Lord will do for us in Jesus' name. As you know, the theme of the retreat is conquering with Christ the, uh, the, the King. And we are the crucified King. And we are believing God that we are, going, we are going to conquer. And as a result of that, we want to use tonight to prepare ourselves for the retreat. That's why we are considering the message titled, Developing Your Faith for Conquering. Developing your faith for conquering. If we are going to conquer with Christ, even at this retreat, and not only at the retreat, all throughout our lives, there is the need for us to develop our faith. There is the need for us, you know, to ensure that our faith is growing so that we can continue to enjoy the victory and the conquest that Christ has purchased for us on the cross at Calvary. Why do we say that? Because faith is essential. Faith is indispensable in our walk with the Lord. Open your Bible with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'll read verse 6 of Hebrews chapter 11. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you see from the Bible there, that without faith, we cannot please the Lord. Without faith, we cannot walk with God. Without faith, we cannot receive from God. That's why it is important. That's why it is essential that we develop our faith. If we are to enjoy the victory like the Lord has given to us this year, there is the need to develop our faith. And how do we do that? In Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I'll read from verse 17 of Romans chapter 10. So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see there, that's how we develop our faith. When we hear the word of God, not just you hear it once, but you hear it over and over and over again. That's how you develop our faith. That's why in our church here, we have these opportunities to come and hear the word of God. At the time on Tuesdays and the Bible study with our Father and the Lord, on Sundays at the Sunday service, and on Fridays like this, the day of revival, we come here to hear the word of God. Because this faith, if our faith is to be developed, there is the need to hear the word of God. There is the need to give attention to the reading and the studying of the Bible. And that's how our faith can be 
develop. And we need to come like the disciples of old that they came to the Lord. In Luke chapter 17, you must have that desire. Like the disciples, if you are true disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, you must have the same desire these disciples they had. In Luke chapter 17, verse, 15, uh, verse 5 and verse, verse 6, And the apostles say unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the apostles and the disciples, these are, these are disciples. These are people that have the privilege, you know, to fellowship with Christ for three and a half years. Yet they still have that longing in their heart. Yet they still have that desire in their heart that their faith should increase, that, the, that their faith should develop. The same thing, can I tell you, there is no state you get to spiritually that you can say, oh, I have arrived. Oh, I don't need, I don't need to improve again. I don't need to develop myself again. I don't need, I can see, I can pray more. I read the Bible more. I, you know, I, the Lord have used me to do signs and wonders. No, these are apostles. These are disciples. Yet they still came to the Lord and said, Lord, increase our faith. I pray the Lord will develop our faith. I pray the Lord will increase our faith. Because faith is essential. The need to develop our faith as believers is further emphasized, you know, emphasized in the rebuke of the disciples by our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, all throughout the three and a half years they spent with him, there are times the Lord had to rebuke them for their own belief. There are times the Lord had to rebuke them for their misinterpretation of the word of God. When you say, you know, that uh, concerning bread and all these things, they were thinking, and the beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, they were thinking of bread, and the Lord had to rebuke them. There are times he had to rebuke them and say, oh, ye of little faith. And, but then you see, through it all, the purpose of that is for the Lord to increase their faith. Can I tell us too, there are times discipline will come. There are times we might be corrected. There are times we might be rebuked. The purpose of all these things is not to put you down. It's for you to increase your faith in the Lord. And I pray that our faith will increase in Jesus' name. You see, the disciples, their faith grew. Even after the departure of our Lord Jesus Christ into glory and the deed exploit for the Lord. And tonight I pray that as we also come in preparation for the Easter retreat that is, com that is commencing seven days from now, that our own faith also will develop. Because if we must receive the best from the Lord at this retreat, there is the need for faith. There is the need for that belief in God and, his, and the great things the Lord will do for us. That's why we are considering this message, developing your faith for conquering. And we are going to conquer. I say we are going to conquer. And great things the Lord will do for us at this retreat in Jesus' name. Point one, the priority of developing your faith to conquer. The priority, it is important. It is essential. Already we've read it in, in Hebrews chapter 11. You see the importance there. Without faith, it is impossible to walk with God. We cannot walk with God except we have faith. We cannot start a Christian life except we have faith. Faith in Christ. Faith in his atoning blow. We cannot lead the Christian life. You know, some people have misconceived the Christian life. They thought, oh, you lead the Christian life by discipline, by struggles. No, we live the Christian life by faith. We cannot live the Christian life if we don't have this faith. Faith in the Lord. Faith in his righteousness. If you are depending on your own self-work, that cannot save you. That's why you see many people, they struggle with sin. As we be setting sin, they struggle because there is no faith. Faith in the power of the blood of Jesus to save from all sin. But I'm telling us tonight that if we must conquer, conquer sin, conquer self, conquer Satan, there is the need to develop our faith. It is important. It is paramount that we develop our faith. Hebrews chapter 11 again. 
Hebrews chapter 11. I'll read verse 6 again of Hebrews chapter 11. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Underline that passage in your Bible. Without faith, my brother, without faith, my sister, it is impossible. It is not by the works of righteousness. It is not by the knowledge of your religion. It is by faith. Because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. By faith. The need to urgently develop our faith as believers cannot be overemphasized. Cannot be overstressed. The experiences of the children of Israel teach us that faith that is not developed we eventually fail. Like you see in the case of the children of Israel, they came out of Egypt, but they failed to develop their faith. Any little thing, they complain and they murmur. Instead of demonstrating faith in God, any little affliction, they complain and murmur against God and against Moses. And as a result of that, they fail and they could not enter into the promised land. Faith is pivotal to our relationship and our fellowship with God. That's why it is important that we develop our faith. That's why it is important that we grow in our faith with God, in our faith in God, because whatsoever is not of faith, the Bible says it is sin. It is sin. Open your Bible with me to Mark chapter 11. The priority of developing our faith to conquer. If we must conquer with God, with Christ our crucified King, it is important that we develop our faith. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, I read from verse 22. And Jesus answering say unto them, what did he, to- what did he tell them? Have faith in God. The same thing I'm telling you tonight, have faith in God. That challenge may be there for some years now. Have faith in God. That sickness, you have been praying about it, and it seems the sickness is still there. The affliction is still there. Have faith in God. Because tonight, the Lord is going to touch you. Because tonight, the Lord is going to heal you. That's the ways of Christ. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, the mountain may be there. In your life and in your family. But the Lord is saying, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Say something to your mountain tonight, And that mountain will move. I say that mountain will move. Quote the promises of God. Speak the word of God to your mountain. And your mountain will give way in Jesus' name. What do you say to the mountain? Mountain, can you just give me space and let me survive? No, that's not what you say to your mountain. What will you say to your mountain? Mountain, can you just be gentle with me and just let me live a little longer? No, that's not what you say to your mountain. What do you say to your mountain? What did Christ say you should say to your mountain? I want to hear you say to your mountain. I want to hear you say to your challenges. I want to, to hear you say to your sickness. I want to hear you say to your problems. Be that we move, and the mountain will remove in Jesus' name. And be that cast into the sea. And be and shall not die. You see there again, and shall not die. But then if mountain must move in our life, we must not doubt. You see the power it is there. The priority, if mountain must move in our life, if we must conquer, conquer sin, conquer sickness, conquer Satan, we must not doubt. We must not have any out of doubt in our heart. He says there, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. But shall believe. Say, I believe. I believe. Say it to yourself, I believe. And shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass. What did he say you would do? I will have. I say from tonight, I will have. Either the devil likes it or not, I will have. As I go for this retreat, I will have. 
I will have my victory. I will have solutions to my problem. I will have revival in my life. I will have the conquest over sin, Satan, and the devil. We will have in Jesus' name. The parity. You must develop your faith. If you must conquer, that's what Christ is telling us here. Have faith in God, my brother. No matter how small your faith is, have it, demonstrate it, show for that faith. Just believe in your heart. Believe the word of God. You swear the promise of God, hold on to that promise of God and believe. And great things the Lord will do for you in Jesus' name. We need to believe and we are going to believe. I say we are going to believe. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Let's see the demonstration of a woman that I believe. And she came with her faith. The priority of developing your faith. Let's see the example of a woman that conquered. And tonight you will conquer. I say you will conquer. Verse from verse 20 of Matthew chapter 9. And behold a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Let us stop there. Faith works. What did I say? What did I say? Faith is not passive. Oh, I have faith in God. My sister, show it. I have faith in God, my brother show it. This woman, she developed her faith. She saw out that belief that if I may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be old. That's what she said in verse 21. And she came behind. Despite the shame, despite the odor that is coming out of her body, because it's a woman issue of blood, and she has had it for 12 years, despite being cast out from the society, despite the reproach, despite the affliction she has suffered, despite the loss of money she had had, this woman, she still demonstrated her faith. You see there, if we must conquer, we need to develop our faith. If we must conquer, we need to put our faith into action. That's what this woman did here. And in verse 22, Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, she, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. The Lord is telling you tonight, Daughter, be of good comfort. I didn't hear your amen. amen. The Lord is telling you tonight, Son, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made you. Thy faith has made you. Thy faith has made you. That was the faith this woman demonstrated. And the woman was made whole from that hour. If you have this kind of faith, you will be made whole. I say you will be made whole. I say you will be healed. I say you will conquer. I say you will deliver. And the Lord will set you free tonight in Jesus' name. Be that made oh, you'll be made oh tonight in Jesus' name. That affliction will not is not forever. That sickness is not forever. That challenge is not forever. Tonight, demonstrate your faith in Christ and the challenge in your life and that sickness in your life will give way in Jesus' name. We should also develop our faith, brethren, in order to be able to obtain great and precious promises which have been made sure to us by the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has made all those promises for us. He has suffered for us. And as we go for this retreat, we are going to conquer with him because he is our crucified king. We are going to reign with him because he is our king. We are going to, you know, we are going to dominate with him because he is the one that has obtained unto us the victory. And that victory we will have in Jesus' name. But then how do we develop our faith? This is also point two. The principles of developing your faith for conquest. The principle 
the principle. How do we develop our faith? That faith that we conquer. That faith that we overcome. That faith that we dominate. I've read it to you already, but let me still read it again to you. Remember, faith is what? You hear and hear and hear the word of God. Are you tired of hearing the word of God? Are you tired of reading the Bible? Then go with me to Romans again, chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then, think comment by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's the principle there. There is no other principle. It is by hearing the word of God. It is not by hearing stories, fables in the world. It is not by hearing the news of the world. It is by hearing and hearing of the word of God. And we will be, and we will hear. I say we will hear. That's the principle of developing a conquering faith. That's the principle of developing the faith that we conquer. In Job chapter 42. Let's see another principle there. Job chapter 42. I will read verses 1 and 2. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know. Everybody say, I know. I I say it with faith and assurance. I I can hear you. I I know. That was the assurance Job had. Despite his problem, despite his affliction, despite his challenge, Job said, I know, and you will know tonight. I say, you will know tonight. What will you know? Look at it there in that verse 2. I know that thou canst do something. I'm asking something. What did Job say? What are you saying? What are you saying to your mountain? What are you saying to your sickness? What are you saying to that challenge in your life and in your family? I know thou canst do everything. The Lord will do everything for you tonight. The Lord will do everything for you tonight. As you go for this retreat, just believe the Lord that God can do everything. Just believe the Lord that Christ has conquered and you will conquer. That Christ was crucified so that you will conquer. And you will conquer in Jesus' name. Just know it. Know it. Say it. Believe it. Have that assurance in your heart. I know. I know. I know. I know and I know. I know and I know. You will know and you will know. You've had it in in times of hope. Great things the Lord has done for others, you know, and you will know in your own time. I say you will know in your own time. That was the assurance, Juba, and you have that same assurance, you will conquer. That's the principle of developing our faith. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter have the assurance. The assurance of the knowledge of the word of God. The assurance of what you know that God has done. And you, you will have it. Hebrews chapter 10. What's the principle there again? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. Now. Everybody say now. Everybody say now. You know, the Christian life is the life of now. It's not the life of yesterday. It's not the life of tomorrow. It's the life of what? It's the life of what? Now. This moment in time. Now. What do you do now? Look at it. Now. Now. The jaws shall do what? Do what? Do what? Cringe. Eh? Sleep. What did the Bible say? What did the Bible say? Live by faith. We live by faith. Now, at this moment of time, at this present hour, we live by faith. The challenges may be there. You may not even know where you're going to have your dinner tonight, but we live by faith. Now, now, 
The job may not be there. No, we live by faith. The challenges may be there. The sickness may be there. The symptoms may be coming up again. But no, we do what? We do what? Live by faith. Live every moment of your life by faith, my brother. Every minute of your life. Don't ask, you know, don't say, oh God, I am going to live by faith tomorrow. It is now. I'm going to conquer sin tomorrow. It is now. When the temptation comes, now, this very moment, conquer that temptation by faith. When the challenges arise, now, now, live by faith. That's the principle of developing our faith. Demonstrate it. Every moment of your life. In the minute detail of your life, demonstrate it. Every decision you make, every steps you make, demonstrate it. Because now the just and the just. I say I'm talking to myself. I'm the just, and I will live by faith. I say I'm the just, and I will live by faith. And great things the Lord will do for us in Jesus' name. The principle of developing our faith. Let's another principle there again. James chapter 5. We are looking at the principles now. James chapter 5. Verse 15 of James chapter 5. Let's see some principles from that. I'm going to read from verse 15 to 18. And then I will draw some principles there. From verse 15. And the prayer of faith. The prayer, it is the when we pray here, it is the prayer of faith. When we pray here, it's not the prayer of doubt. When we say your sickness will go, and you believe it's the prayer of faith, that sickness will go, and you believe that. When we say that challenge will go, is the prayer is the confession of faith, and you believe that that, that challenge will go. When we say that affliction will come to pass, it is a statement of faith, and you believe that that affliction will pass. The prayer of faith, that's the principle. Prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. What is faith? What is faith? What is faith? We have the definition of faith already in the Bible. Hebrews chapter 11. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. That's faith. That's faith. And when we pray, you have that substance within you. Oh, as the pastor is going to pray now, I believe that sickness will go. I believe that affliction will go. I believe that challenge will go. And you believe that. That's faith. That's the prayer of faith. That's the principle there of developing our faith. You pray the prayer of faith. And you believe God. The substance of things hoped for. What are you hoping for? You have that substance. Are you open for divine healing and aid? You have that substance within you. As you go for the retreat, what are you open for? Are you open that, oh, I'm going to get my professional job? You go with that substance of things hoped for as the man of God is going to pray. Are you believing God? So, oh, well, I believe I'm going to come out of my death. You have that substance of things hoped for. The substance of things, that's faith. That's faith. That's faith. And it says that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Shall save the sick. Shall save the sick. Amen. And the Lord shall rise him up. Shall raise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be what? Forgiven him. That's the, prayer. That's, the, that's the principle there. That's another principle there. The prayer of faith and forgiveness. Forgiveness of sin. If you must develop your faith for conquest, there must be the forgiveness of sin. There must not be any sin hiding in, the, in your tabernacle. Any unconfessing. That's why it says in verse 16, confess your faults one to another. One to another principle there. Where you've done wrong, you apologize. If you must conquer, where you've won that brother, where you've won that sister, you, are, you say to lead, like we said on Sunday, we say to lead on one on one. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that he might be here, my brother. The solution to your problem is within you, it's not in any man thing, 
The solution to your problem is within your tabernacle there. Examine yourself. Why is it that that challenge has prolonged long, so long in your life? Maybe you just need to take this principle. This principle of confessing your fault one to another. Maybe you just need to take this principle. This principle of praying for one another. Maybe you just need to take this principle. This principle of the restoration of fellowship with one another. That's it there. That's the principle there of developing our faith. Faith will not develop if there is still anger in the heart. Faith will not develop if there is still bitterness in the heart. Faith will not develop if there is still unforgiving spirit in the heart. If we must have our faith developed so that we can conquer as we prepare ourselves for this retreat, we must restore fellowship where there is no fellowship. Confess your fault one to another. Go to that brother. Go to that sister. That solution is within you. That solution is within you. And you will have it in Jesus' name. And then look at verse 17. Verse 17. Verse 15, 16. Let me just read verse The effectual prayer of the righteous man have they let more. That's another principle. The principle of righteousness. The principle of righteousness. Have it. That's how we develop our faith. Not the principle of unrighteousness. Not the principle of sin, but the principle of righteousness. Then he says, he gave us an example there, Elias, Elijah was a man, subject to like passion as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the air by the space of three years and six months. Let us stop there. He prayed earnestly. That's another principle there. You pray earnestly. The prayer of, you know, earnestness. Give me children or I die. That's the prayer of Rebecca. And did she had children. Yes, she had. She had Joseph and Benjamin. But eventually she died. But you will not die. I say you will not die. The Lord will give you your need. And then you will live to enjoy your needs, your requests, I mean your blessings in Jesus' name. But she was earnest about it. When we now say, oh, let's rise up and pray, you are not just dozing. You pray earnestly. Fervent prayer. Prayer that is coming out of a body heart. That's the prayer we are talking about. The prayer of earnestness. That's the principle there of developing our faith. Our faith for conquest. And I pray our faith will develop in Jesus' name. In order for believers to increase in grace and in faith and in Christian virtues, you must hear the word of God. I've said that already. You not only hear, but you act on the word of God. Act on it. Act on it. I've said that already as well. Job, he, had, he acted on that word. He says, I know. He knew the word of God. He was a righteous man. The Lord even testified of Job before Satan. And he knew, and he acted on the wind in the time of his problem. He acted on the word of God. Increase your knowledge and understanding of God as well. Believe the testimonies. The testimonies of God's supernatural hearts you've seen in the lives of others. When you believe, when you do all these things and all the principles we've shared before, great will be our faith in Jesus' name. Have positive conf- confession. Even when everything seems to be negative, have positive confession. And great things the Lord will do for us in Jesus' name. This leads us to point three quickly before we pray possibilities through a well developed faith that conquers. Possibilities through a well developed faith that conquers. What are the possibilities? What are the great things that can be done through this way developed faith? We see it already, catalog of heroes of faith in the Bible, Hebrews chapter 11. Look at the possibilities here. Look at the great things they did. Possibilities, Hebrews chapter 11. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, from verse 1, the evidence of things not seen, 
For by it the elders obtain a good report. You will obtain good report. I say you will obtain good report. Amen. You will come here and you will give testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. Through faith, we understand. By the words, the words, we are framed by the word of God. You see the Jehovah God there. True faith. True faith. True faith. So that things which are seen, we are not, we are not made of things which do appear. Go spoke the word, let there be light. And was there light? There was light. Let the sea, look, the decree God gave, the boundary God gave between the sea and the land, that decree still stands till today. That's why we are here. If not, we'll have been under the water. Do you understand? That's the God we are serving. He spoke the word. And that word came to pass. You two speak the word. I say you speak the word. And it's not just any word. It says the word of God. Speak the word of God. And your, your testimonies will come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 3, verse 4, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained weakness, that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated, that he should not see death. You will not see death. Ah, Pastor, what are you saying now? I'm not, I'm not, but death is for everybody. Believe me, you will not see death. You will not see reception. You will not see poverty. Amen. You will not see sickness. Amen. You will not see afflictions. Amen. You will not see failure. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Anything that is connected with death, you will not see it in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not die spiritually. Amen. You will be alive. I say you will be alive. You will lead the Christian life. And great things the Lord will do for us in Jesus' name. In verse 7, by faith, Noah, being one of God, of things not seen as yet, move with fear, prepare an act to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heirs of righteousness, which is by faith. You will escape the judgment that is coming upon this world. Those are the possibility. You will escape it. If you have faith in God, if you develop your faith, if this faith that conquer, you, you will not perish with the world. I didn't hear your amen. amen. You will not perish with the world. By faith, verse 8, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have received for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of him, of the same promise. In this strange land, you will prosper. In this strange land, you will enjoy the promises of God. In this strange land, you will receive the inheritance of the Lord in Jesus' name. But then you must have this faith. This way develop faith. Faith that conquer. And these things the Lord will do for us in Jesus' name. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. I will read verse 4 and 5, verses 4 and 5. For whatsoever, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the war. You will overcome the war. The corruptions of the war, you will overcome. Amen. I didn't hear you. Amen. Amen. The sins that are drawing people down, you will overcome. Amen. The afflictions of the war, you will overcome. Amen. The challenges of the war, you will overcome. And this is the victory. That overcome it, the war. Even what? Give it to me. Even what? Our faith. By our faith, we will conquer. By our faith, we will conquer. By our faith, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, we see that overcome the war. But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. You, you will overcome. 
quickly, I just want to show you seven people in the Bible that had these great possibilities through a well-developed faith. I start with number one, Jabez. First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, Jabez. Jabez prayed and he changed his destiny by faith. You will pray tonight, you will change your destiny by faith. If they say, oh, there's nobody in your family that have gone this far, your own case will be different. You, you will go far. I say you, you will go far. You will be a place setter in Jesus' name. Jo- Jacob, we have the example of Jacob. The testimony of Jacob. Jacob changed his circumstances by faith. It, you know, he, when Esau was coming for him, he wanted to destroy him. But J- Jacob, he held on to the law. And he prevailed with the law. And the Lord changed his name. Look at the principles we've told you already. Fabian prayer, endless prayer. And the Lord changed his name. And said, you will no more be called Jacob, but you will be called Israel. But because as a prince, you have wrestled and you have prevailed with God. Your own king, you will change the circumstances. As Jacob changed his circumstances, you, you will change your circumstances. All those that have set their eyes against you and say, well, you will not prosper. The Lord will touch them. They will come and bless you. Amen. I say they will come and bless you. Amen. In your in the, before their very eyes, you will excel in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three, we have the example of Joseph. Joseph, 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 Joseph. You know, he was in the pot, he was in Potiphar's house. And the woman cast her eyes upon him. And so Jacob, uh, Joseph, you know, come and commit this iniquity with me. And Jake and Joseph, by faith, by faith. That's what we are telling you, the righteousness of faith. By faith. You know, people will say, oh, when, you have, when you have faith, only believe, only believe, only believe. It is not only believe. It comes with righteousness. That was what Joseph demonstrated. He had the faith. Remember, he was a man that had vision. He was a man that had dream. He knew where God was taking him to. And that temptation came for him to compromise, for him to lose his dream, for him to to lose his destiny. But Joseph, he refused. By faith, he said, how can I do this great wickedness in the sight of God? He was quoting the word of God to that woman. That's the faith we are telling you here. You know, he refused. And he had his dreams fulfilled. All your dreams will be fulfilled. All your visions that will come to reality. Amen. All the things, all the goals you set for your life that you want to achieve, only believe that will come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. We have the example of, jo- of Jacob, of, um, of, uh, Joshua, Joshua, Joshua. Joshua, he changed the position of the moon and the sun for the favor of the children of Israel. You see that in in Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. He says, Son, stand still. Son, stand still. Can you tell your storms, stand still? Storms, stand still. And the storms, they will obey obey you in Jesus' name. Joshua need to conquer. And it was getting dark. And he said, no, it must not get that. So, stand still. Your victory, we at last, your yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. Your son will never go down. Amen. The son of God's victory over your life will never go down. Amen. But that son will continue to shine in Jesus' name. Amen. Number five, in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verses 20 to 23, we have the example of Joshua there. Joshua. Joshua. The enemies came. They wanted to crush the children of Israel. But Joshua told, you know, he, he told the people, what can we do? He called the priest, please give us the word of God. And the word of God was given. That's what we are telling you tonight. You need the word of God. The word of God was given to Joshua. And said, this is what you need to do. Call the singers. Call the trumpeter. Call everybody. All you need to do. Don't fight. Those begin to sing. Those begin to sing. Those begin to bless the name of the Lord. And Joshua did that. He called the singers. He called those music musicians. And they began to bless the name of the Lord. And as they are praising God. You know, that's, you see the principle of victory there. Praise God. 
When the enemies are rising against your life, just praise God. When the challenges are there, just praise God. When it seems, oh, they're telling you in this place of work now, this is happening, this is happening, you just bless God. Praise God. And great will be your victory in Jesus' name. That was what Joshua had. They praised praise God. And he had the victory. Number six, we have the example of Job. Job, Job, Job. I've read that on to, on to you already. Who turned his situation to good. And he recovered all that he lost. All because he says, I know. I know. He had that assurance. He had that assurance. And if you have that assurance tonight, great things the Lord will do for you. All that you have lost, you will recover. All that you have lost, you will recover. And you have the victory in Jesus' name. Yes. Then lastly, we have the example of John. John, the beloved apostle. The apostle of love. The apostle of love. John, how can John, how are we talking of John here? John, remember, he suffered persecution. He was thrown into a boiling oil, but that man refused to die. You know, in his old age, he was in his hundred. And yet he was still alive, but because of his faith in God, he had the book of Revelation. In fact, you know that the book of Revelation is the only book in the Bible that is given by an angel. The book of there's no other book. And John the Beloved, he had the privilege of having this book until today. The, we are still reading. Look at the blessing that this man John the Beloved gave to his to the church of the living God. We are still reading and studying the book of Revelation. And all because he had faith. Faith in God in times of persecution. My brother, hey, hold on to your faith in times of opposition. My sister, hold on to your faith. Don't let go of your faith. The challenges may be tall. The fire of persecutions may be burning. The fires of oppositions may be burning. There is a revelation coming your way. There is a blessing coming your way. There is a blessing coming your way. And that revelation, it will last you. If you allow, if Jesus tarries, you will be a blessing to his church in Jesus' name. Develop in your faith. Faith to conquer. As we prepare ourselves for this retreat, we need to develop our faith. We need to increase our faith. We need to go with a heart having that assurance that God can do all things. We need to believe. That as we go for this retreat, we are going to conquer with the crucified king. We need to believe the challenges may be there, the problems may be there, the sicknesses may be there, but our faith in God and great things the Lord will do for you, my brother, in Jesus' name. Great things the Lord will do for you, my sister, in Jesus' name. Develop your faith. Use this time now, between now and the retreat period, Start to develop your faith. Start to increase your faith. Read more of the Bible. Read more of the testimonies of the great things the Lord has done in time past. Believe the Lord and begin to pray fervently like we have prayed tonight. Begin to seek the face of the Lord. Begin to write down what you want God to do for you at this retreat. And begin to believe and begin to have that assurance that you know that God can do all things. I have faith in God. I have faith in God. From tonight, I have faith in God. And great things the Lord will do for me. And great things the Lord will do for you in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and commit ourselves to the hands of the Lord in prayers. If we must conquer, we need to develop our faith. Let's talk to the Lord tonight. Begin to call upon the Lord. Begin to ask the Lord tonight. That the Lord will touch your life, my brother. That the Lord will increase your faith, my sister. Believe the Lord. What are you trusting God for? What are you believing the Lord for? What are you holding on to the Lord for? Believe the Lord tonight. Great things the Lord will do for you. As we go for the retreat, let's begin to prepare ourselves. Let's begin to prepare ourselves. And even from tonight, all those challenges, all those small things, there we go. There we go, my brother. We've seen the power today of developing our faith. 
If we must conquer, develop your faith. Seeing the principles there with the word of God, add the assurance, increase your understanding of God, put your faith into, into parties, demonstrate your faith, put it to action. The principle there. Give yourself to fervent prayers. Give yourself to fervent prayers. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's ask the Lord that the Lord himself will help us. We will develop our faith. Faith to conquer. Faith to conquer. Faith to conquer. As we go for this retreat, great things the Lord will do for us. My brother, you will conquer. My sister, you will conquer. Believe the Lord tonight. Believe the Lord tonight. Believe the Lord tonight. What are you looking up unto the Lord for? Believe the Lord. Believe the Lord from tonight. Great things the Lord will do for you. Great things the Lord will do for you. You will have your own testimonies. You will have your own testimony, my brother. You will have your own testimony, my sister. Believe the Lord tonight. Great things the Lord will do for you.